Message day number five, and the challenge is to listen 28 times in 28 days. Now, you don't have to listen 28 times. You don't have to listen once a day. If you miss a day, you could listen twice on a day, or you could do a triple session. Is this brainwashing? Yes, but it's a positive type of brainwashing. You become what you think about most of the time. Go to YouTube and type in, the Strangest Secret, The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. One of the most powerful messages you ever hear. And the strangest secret is you become what you think about most of the time. Did I say that today's message is specially dedicated to Freddie B. from New Jersey? So here we go. Day number five, With or Without Sneezes, How I Raised Myself from Failure to, uh, to Success in Selling by Frank Betker. This book is in the sales section. At Barnes and Noble. He, even though it was originally published in 1949, Barnes and Noble still still carries it. How one idea multiplied my income in happiness. Shortly after I started out as a professional baseball player, I got one of the biggest shocks in my life. That was way back in 1907. I was 19 years old, and I was playing for Johnstown, Pennsylvania, in the Tri-State League. I was young, and I wanted to make it to the majors. And what do you think happened? I got cut from the team. My whole life might have been different if I hadn't gone to the manager and asked him why he cut me. In fact, I wouldn't have had the rare privilege of writing this book if I hadn't asked him that question. The manager said he cut me because I was lazy. Well, that was the last thing I expected him to say. Frank, you drag yourself around the field like a veteran who's been playing ball for 20 years. You're a 19-year-old kid. Why do you act that way if you're not lazy? Well, Coach, I said, I'm so nervous and I'm so scared that I want to hide my fear from the crowd and especially from the other players on the team. Besides, I hope that by taking it easy, I'll get rid of my nervousness. (laughs) Frank, it doesn't work that way. That's the thing that's holding you back. Whatever you do after you leave here, for heaven's sakes, wake yourself up and put some life and enthusiasm into your work. I'd been making $175 a month at Georgetown. After being cut there, I went down to Chester, Pennsylvania in the Atlantic League, where they paid me only $25 a month. Well, I couldn't feel very enthusiastic on that kind of money, but I began to act enthusiastic. So this should be bold, italics, and underlined. This is the nugget. I couldn't feel very enthusiastic, but I began to act enthusiastic. You do not have to act the way you feel. Once you start acting a certain way, you'll start feeling a certain way. Most people say, well, when I feel it, then I'll act it. No, when you act it, then you'll feel it. Okay, back to Frank. After I was here for three days, an old ball prayer friend of mine, uh, Danny Meehan, came to me and said, Frank, what are you doing down in the rank bush leagues like this? Well, Danny, I replied, replied, if I knew how to get a better job, I'd go anywhere. A week later, Danny got me a trial with New Haven, Connecticut. My first day in New Haven will always stand out in my memory as a great event in my life. No one knew me in that league. So I made a resolution that nobody would ever accuse me of being lazy ever again. I made up my mind to establish a reputation of being the most enthusiastic ball player they'd ever seen in the New England League. I thought if I could establish such a reputation, then I'd have to live up to it. You could establish a reputation, too. From the minute I appeared on the field, I acted like a man electrified. I acted as though I were alive with a million batteries. I threw the ball around the diamond so fast and so hard that it almost knocked our infielders' hands apart. Once apparently trapped in a rundown, I slid into third base with so much energy and force that the third baseman fumbled the ball and I was able to score an important run. Yes, it was all a show. It was all an act I was putting on. The thermometer that day was nearly 100 degrees. I wouldn't have been surprised if I dropped over with a sunstroke the way I was running around the field. But did it work? It worked like magic. Three things happened. Number one, my enthusiasm almost entirely overcame my fear. In fact, my nervousness began to work for me, and I played far better than I ever thought I was capable of playing. Number two, my enthusiasm affected See, I would say my enthusiasm infected, a positive infection, 
the other players on the team, and they too became enthusiastic. And number three, instead of dropping with the heat, I felt better during the game and after it was over than I had ever felt before. My biggest thrill came the following morning when I read in the New Haven newspaper. Our new player, Betker, is a barrel of enthusiasm. He inspired our team. They not only won the game, but they looked better than any time this season. The newspapers nicknamed me Pep Betker, the life of the team. I emailed the newspaper clippings. No, what I mean email. I mailed the newspaper clippings to Bert Cohn, manager of Georgetown. Could you imagine the expression on his face when he read about Pep Betker, the guy that he cut three weeks ago for being lazy? Within 10 days, enthusiasm took me from $25 a month to $185 a month. It increased my income by 700%. Let me repeat, nothing but the determination to act enthusiastic increased my income 700% in 10 days. I got this stupendous increase in salary not because I could throw a ball better or catch a ball better or hit better or run better or feel better. I didn't know any more about baseball than I did before. It was all enthusiasm. Two years later, two years from the time I'd been hoping to make $125 a month in that little Chester outfit, I made it to the major leagues. I was a third baseman for the St. Louis Cardinals, and it multiplied my income by 30 times. What did it? Enthusiasm alone did it. Nothing but enthusiasm. Two years after that, while playing third base in Chicago against the Chicago Cubs, I had a bad accident. Picking up a swinging bunt while on a full run, I attempted to throw a ball in the opposite direction, and something snapped in my arm. That accident forced me to give up baseball forever. This seemed like a great tragedy to me at the time, but I now look back on it as one of the most fortunate events of my life. So on Success Hotline, we have a whole slew of messages how the worst thing became the best thing. Remember the Tom Mapoffer story? Tom Cruise? Remember the Mick Jagger story? He bit off his tongue. I returned home and for the next two years made my living riding around the streets of Philadelphia on a bicycle. I was a collector for an installment furniture concern. I decided then to try selling life insurance with the Fidelity Mutual Life Insurance Company. The next 10 months of my life were the longest and most disheartening months of my life. A dismal failure at selling life insurance, I finally concluded that I was never cut out to be a salesman, and I began answering want ads for a job as a shipping clerk. I realized, however, that no one, that no matter what work I tried to do, I had to overcome a strange fear complex that possessed me. Now, this is what I really don't understand. I wish he elaborated on this more. I don't know what a strange fear complex is. So I joined one of Dale Carnegie's courses in public speaking, which you could still take to this very day. One night, Mr. Carnegie stopped me in the middle of a talk. Mr. Becker, he said, just a moment, just a moment. Are you interested in what you're saying? Yes, uh, of course I am. Well, then, why don't you talk with a little enthusiasm? Why don't you, uh, how do you expect your audience to be interested if you don't put some life and animation into what you say? Dale Carnegie then gave our class a stirring talk on the power of enthusiasm. He got so excited during his talk that he threw up a uh, chair up against the wall and broke off one of his arms. Before I went to bed that night, I sat up for an hour thinking. My thoughts went back to my baseball days at Johnstown in New Haven. And for the first time, I had this revelation. I realized that the very fault which threatened to wreck my baseball career was now threatening to wreck my career as a salesman. I decided that night, or the decision I made that night, was a turning point to my life. That decision was to stay in the insurance business and put the same enthusiasm into selling that I put into playing baseball when I joined the New Haven team. I shall never forget the first call I made the next day. I made up my mind that I was going to show my prospect the most enthusiastic salesman he had ever seen in his life. So as I pounded my fist with excitement, I expected every minute to have the man stop me and ask if there was something wrong with me. But he didn't. At one stage of the interview, I noticed he sat up, taller in his chair, opened his eyes wider, but he never stopped me except to ask questions. Did he ever throw me out? No. He bought a policy. This man, Al Emmons, 
from Philadelphia soon became one of my good friends and a great booster. From that day on, I began to sell. I mean, really sell. The magical enthusiasm began to work for me in business, just as it had in baseball. I would not want to give anybody the impression that I think enthusiasm consists of fist pounding. But if fist pounding is what you need to arouse yourself inside, then I'm, I am overwhelmingly for it. I know this. When I force myself to act enthusiastic, I'm going to sneeze. When I excuse me, I know this. When I force myself to act enthusiastic, I soon feel enthusiastic. During my 32 years of selling, I have seen enthusiasm double and triple the income of dozens of salespeople, and I have seen the lack of it cause hundreds of salespeople to fail. I firmly believe in enthusiasm is by far the single biggest factor in successful selling. I firmly believe that enthusiasm is by far the single biggest factor in successful selling. For example, I know a man who is an authority on insurance. He could even write a book on the subject, yet he hasn't made a decent living selling. Why? Largely because of his lack of enthusiasm. I know another salesman who didn't know one-tenth as much about selling, uh, about insurance, yet he made a fortune selling it, and he retired in 20 years. His name is Stanley Geddes. He now lives in Miami Beach, Florida. The reason for his outstanding success was not his knowledge. It was his enthusiasm. Can you acquire enthusiasm? Can you acquire enthusiasm, or must you be born with it? Certainly, you could acquire it. Stanley Geddes acquired it. He became a human dynamo. How? Just by forcing himself each and every day to act enthusiastic. As a part of this plan, Stanley Geddes repeated a poem. Almost every morning for 20 years, he repeated this poem to himself. He found that it helped him generate enthusiasm for the day. So here is Stanley Geddes' poem entitled Victory. You are the man who used to boast that you'd achieve the uttermost someday. You merely wish to show, you merely wish to show to demonstrate how much you know and prove the distance you can go. Another year we just passed through. What new ideas came to you? How many big things did you do? Time left 12 months in your care. How many of them did you share with opportunities and dare? Again, where you so often missed. We do not find you on the list of makers good. Explain the fact. Ah, no, t'was not the chance you lacked. As usual, you failed to act. Why don't you memorize the same poem? I once read a statement by Walter P. Chrysler of the Chrysler Corporation. I was so impressed by it that I carried it in my pocket, and I read it every day. Chrysler, when asked to give the secret of success, listed various qualities, such as ability, capacity, energy, but added the real success secret was enthusiasm. Yes, and even more than enthusiasm, Chrysler said, I would say excitement. I like to see men get excited. When they get excited, they get customers excited, and we get business. Enthusiasm is by far the highest paid quality on earth, probably because it is one of the rarest, yet it is also one of the most contagious. If you are enthusiastic, your listener very likely will become enthusiastic, even though you may present your ideas poorly. Without enthusiasm, your sales talk is about as dead as last year's turkey. Enthusiasm isn't merely an outward expression. Once you begin to acquire it, enthusiasm works constantly within you. You may be sitting quietly in your home. An idea occurs to you. That idea begins to develop. Finally, you become consumed with enthusiasm. Nothing could stop you. It will help you overcome fear. It will help you become more successful in business. It will help you make more money. It will help you enjoy a healthier, richer, and happier life. When can you begin? Right now. Just say to yourself, this one thing I could do. How could you begin? There's just one rule. To become enthusiastic, act enthusiastic. Put this rule into action for 30 days and be prepared to see astonishing results. It may easily revolutionize your entire life. So stand up each morning and repeat with powerful gestures and all the enthusiasm you can generate to become enthusiastic, act enthusiastic, to become enthusiastic, 
act enthusiastic. So 